Hello right back, this is Jay Plays Games. Welcome back to another ARK Survival Evolve news video. The PS4 update that was meant to come out is not coming out. We've also got the Community Crunch, a brand new creature, as well as a bunch of questions answered by the lead creator Jeremy Stieglitz. Plus, two brand new mods have been added to the sponsored mod program, as well as some information about rentable servers for Xbox and PS4. So Jeremy put this tweet out a few hours ago saying he couldn't get the PS4 update through Q&A today. Looks like it's going to release on Monday. So hopefully that is the case guys and you should see the dedicated fix for dedicated servers as well as a bunch of other little issues coming on Monday. Remember Xbox won't get the dedicated fix for another two weeks maybe. Now it got really late last night and they still hadn't actually posted anything to do with the new dossier and it turns out they were waiting for the Community Crunch. So Community Crunch 99 introducing the Otter. Who knew we needed an Otter in our lives? I'm not going to lie, when I, when I saw this on Discord I couldn't believe my eyes. Of all the dinosaurs and creatures they want to add to the game at the last minute, an Otter. But apparently it has got some benefits, it's going to help you get silica pearls. So it's found amongst the island's many inland waterways. It's become exceptionally adept at hunting and foraging. It's got very cunning because of its innuitive size. Fierce competition for its preferred food source, fish. You can get fur from them, obviously, and they roam around the rivers in small packs. Other benefits are it actually insulates you against cold. And you can carry it on your shoulder. You can demand it that it goes harvest fish and with a specific goal in mind. From that fish it consumes, the otter has a chance for getting silica pearls. And can even yield a slight chance at finding black pearls within. The crunch goes on to list all the things that they're planning for the future of ARK. According to this post, they'll be planning on more work on the base game, more free updates and DLC, paid and free. And at last, they've finally revealed the tech items that you may have seen in the dev kits or you saw in my video where I showed off the shield and the actual sword. What you might notice there as well, they've got the new tech lights. Apparently the tech light can be attached or picked up to from any source and is self-powered by elemental shards. The tech shield can stop splash damage and stop all incoming projectiles. And the tech sword has armor piercing capability. If you didn't know, with the official release of Ark delayed to the 29th, Ragnarok won't be coming out till then either, which means they've had more time to add more content. Coming up, a brand new coastal wyvern cavern. A tropical desert, lowlands, Tasmania, several iconic beaches, a hidden temple, a new cave, an epic boss encounter and much more. It's looking pretty good, it's looking pretty sweet, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like, particularly the desert environment, how it's going to blend the scorched earth assets in. You can see there, it looks pretty sweet. And for people who've always wanted a pet snake, Titan Bowers will now finally be tameable. This has long been, long been teased and they've meant to have implemented it a couple times and it just hasn't actually been added in. So they're still working on the mid-month update, for, particularly for the player dedicated servers. Like I said, the certification for PS4 should go through on Monday. If it passes this time, it should be live then. Whereas Xbox, you're going to have to wait another couple of weeks. Whereas Xbox, the earliest you might see is next Friday, possibly. Go and check out my duping video where I talk about their plans and what they plan to actually do to stop duping happening. PC dedicated console servers will be initially rolling out to PlayStation 4 for the time being. We will be technically set up to launch them on both our console platforms from a development point of view, but are currently running in some business and pipeline questions with Microsoft, which we hope to resolve in the coming weeks. That is really disappointing. Uh, you know, how many freaking months have they spoke about dedicated servers? You know, Christmas time they said it was going to happen, that they'd be looking into it and they would set up dedicated servers. And yet eight months on, they still haven't sorted out the actual crucial business stuff with Microsoft. I mean, how hard is it? And of all the platforms, the one that's the most crap in terms of letting mods on their platform and stuff like that, PlayStation 4 are trying to give them exactly what they want. So we'll go through these questions quite quickly, briefly. Black Wolf Survivor says that building, he'd like to see more stuff going on. And the creator said they're investing the possibility of including Structures Plus as an officially integrated feature. Not a sponsored mod, but actually directly into the core game itself. No promises yet though, it depends on how much of a clean implementation it proves to be. That would be really cool, really exciting. The no clip does help a lot, but I know lots and lots of you still want the Structures Plus. Cineac Ember asks, will the two upcoming DLCs in Season Pass round out complete arcs story entirely, or is there a possibility for additional expansions beyond those? Jeremy says, we'll see how the next two expansions go. If there's more interesting story to tell and survival mechanics to explore beyond that, I'm hopeful. The TLC pass for dinos that they touted they would do before the actual game released has now been put back until way after the launch. 
If you don't know what that means, many of the old dinosaurs kind of just look a bit derpy and just don't necessarily have the same really useful mechanics as some of the latest dinosaurs. He also asks, will we keep seeing frequent updates or is it going to slow down a little? Jeremy says, same format as pre-launch, at least for the rest of this year, namely firefight and individual feature updates. Next year, we'll probably settle into a groove of less frequent, bigger themes. Will the Ice Wyvern ever get a distinct model texture and breath weapon instead of a reskin? Yes, at the end of August, and it will be transferable. Will we be getting more robust tech arsenal? Things like the tech rifle are good, but this guy wants more tech heavy weapons, I don't know why. Plasma cannon or railgun maybe, or even a sidearm sniper rifle or close quarter weapon. Jeremy says, yes, you will. Stay tuned. I'm a big fan of Eraser. Now that the game's full launch is approaching, will you be taking a look at some of the content you originally wanted to implement? but was cut for various reasons, such as oil lanterns, primitive saddle mat cannons, beanbag ammo for shotguns, scrape shot, etc. We plan to continue to add content post-launch. I'm optimistic that most of these ideas will be realised in the months ahead. How's the tree kibble rework coming along? It's nearly ready for public feedback, just try and decide whether I want to put it out now or wait until the experimental branch is live post-launch. Leaning towards experimental branch to enable us to have more time to collect live feedback before it affects officials in case we don't get some of the values right. People we were colour blind, there will be some options added hopefully by the end of October. Scrysis asks, is Primal Arc still being developed? You know, the total conversion that allows players to play as the dinos. Jeremy says the team working on it had to put it on the back burner to help with completing our UWP and multi-platform launch goals. So if you don't know about that, I've told you guys many times, Instinct Games are the ones that were charged with making the actual mod, but they actually ended up optimising the actual full game. We hope to return to it post-launch. Is the Phoenix permanently scrapped or will you guys add it to another DLC? It's been added to Scorched Earth on August the 29th as a thank you for everyone making that expansion such a success. We really do appreciate it. So, after Jen said a little while ago the Phoenix was going to not come into the game, there's coming into the game. I really hope it's got a cool mechanic. I would love it if it actually dies, but you can regen it or you can you know, make it rise again from the ashes like a Phoenix is meant to. Where do you stand with the Windows 10 version of the game? It's nearly ready, with Crossplay and Windows host dedicated server and cross byte and cross-platform transfer of data etc and it should release on August the 29th or near that, depending on whether Microsoft can certify it for launch quickly enough. And also in this answer he's contradicted what Jack just put in the comments above. 4 is going to get the dedicated servers first, it looks like Xbox is going to have to wait until they resolve some sort of business issue. Extinction servers have been dead for a very long time, now I've seen countless posts and tweets asking for the map to be reverted back to the island. Will this ever happen? Yes, we'll likely make that change on the August 29th new launch. Will console see the return of Terra Distance? Nope! Although we'll see about widening it as we get on. It was an accident to allow that slider on console and it did cause issues. They may have been subtle but were quite serious and irreversible. Irresolvable? Irreversible. Irresolvable. I don't even know if that's a word, is it? I did warn everyone when the actual tether came out that I don't think it would here be here to stay. But at least if they can widen it, that might actually help a little bit. Will console be able to place items straight from orbit camera similar to PC? I don't see why not, we'll take a look at why it isn't behaving like PC in that regard. Of all the questions to ask, the most important question is going, will, will you be able to place stuff while in orbit cam? Will console see a system where you can download paint prefabs for dinos, canvases etc like PC? We're currently investigating the possibility of allowing players to trade templates inside the game itself. Odds are good this will work out. Stonefeather asks, will insects ever become breedable? I feel like they've been outclassed by other creatures and being able to raise your own would help bring them closer in line with other creatures. Jeremy says, not by us, their life cycles are too different from animals so it'd be difficult to represent without a major amount of effort for each individual insect. Oakwind asks, when are we getting Phenomia bacon we were promised? Jeremy says Dino TLC passed this year. Lewiton asks, do you plan to make AI overhaul before or after the launch? What will the AI overhaul include? Among other things, during the Dino TLC pass, for example, we plan to make various creatures biased towards nocturnal or diurnal, so that unless they are perturbed, you'd actually see them sleeping and recovering their vital status during that time. This will provide more incentive for travel at a specific time of day or night, depending on where you're going. That would be a really cool feature, to have lots of creatures kind of just hibernating at night time and coming out during the day, or likewise the other way around. And I mentioned this when I showed off the torch in the saddle, you don't know you can do that now on console, you can add a torch to your saddle. 
Will we ever get a banner flag fixed in Saddle, similar to the tribe flag from Survival of the Fittest? Very possible, but just haven't got round to it yet. Sponsored mod program updates. So, big news on this, guys, and I'm really looking forward to these. I'm supporting them on Patreon. Is Dragon Punk has been added to the latest actual program. It's a total conversion mod. If you've not seen my little preview on it before, it's going to involve a huge Leviathan creature that actually has a city on it. Not to mention a bunch of other cool things. It's also going to include the Mythological Creatures Pack. Now I played with the actual Mythological Creatures pack on Ragnarok and some parts of it are really cool, some parts are really good but it certainly needs a lot more work. With them joining forces with the Dragon Punk team I'm sure they're going to do a fantastic job of making this total conversion. I'll be doing a lot more previews on this mod as it develops guys so expect to see the best news coming from me. Call of the Wild is going to be a horde based mod. You'll be able to summon or spawn a huge wave of dinosaurs in one particular spot. So that's really cool, that's really interesting. I'm going to be doing a separate video taking a look at some of these other mods. You know, guys know about some of the mods that actually have been kicked off the program. We'll also be talking about the truth of mods and whether or not you really should be expecting so many of these sponsored mods to come to console. I know lots of YouTubers have hyped this up and I hyped this up last year before I've really kind of find out a lot more information. Don't expect nearly half these sponsored mods to come in the next six months. In fact, we'll be lucky if we get one or two of these sponsored mods coming to console. But we'll be going through some more information about that in a separate video. And just a quick one on the actual Art Community Crunch. It's back. They've included a lot more this week. There's loads of pictures. Go and check it out for yourself. I'll leave the link down below. But a big shout out to two people. We've got Missy's Amazing Throne. She's not going to mind me showing you this, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the Throne of Nightmares. I am Queen Arachnia of the Underworld. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just missing, just messing, just showing you how to build a really cool throne. In that cool? So go and check that out, guys. And you can have your own throne exactly like Missy on console. And the next one is by Runs With Pencils. She built all of this on official, guys, and it's really cool. I've actually been there because I've done a world tour. Expect to see that world tour video later on today or tomorrow. And here you go, guys, is the completed version coming. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that little bit. It was just a bit of stupidity on my part. I do like to do things that are a little bit off the wall. Um, a little bit disappointed. I wanted to have red and white stripes on these. Uh, so go and check out that full video in the Community Crunch. I will leave the link down below, people. And how could I forget Geeky Gamer and Googly Owl? Probably my favourite art YouTubers. Hands down, I watch them every single week. And that is all you need to see from them. Go and check it out for yourself. They are as funny as... So there you go guys, a bit of a bumper filled Q&A session. I don't normally like going through all that like that. I'd much rather show you guys. So as the minute I can, I'm going to take a look at the actual Phoenix in the dev kit again. As well as doing separate videos for a lot of them issues like the servers. And about the mod support in the future. So I'm Jay Plays Games. I'll be here first with the ARC news. Make sure you like and you're subscribed and I'll see you ratbags later.